Good evening. Uh, welcome as we prepare to celebrate Palm Sunday. Uh, just a little note. Um, we had to be a little... Uh, uh, how do I say this? Creative? That's good. Thank you, Jacob. Uh, with the palms today, as um, for the, the truck with the palms didn't come in, and then when they tried to send it again, it went from Fargo past Brandon into Minneapolis, and so our palms are in Minneapolis. And uh, so we had to steal these from St. William. So uh, that's why we only had a few for this evening, but um, they will come on Monday, I'm guessing Tuesday, because of the... Um, uh, the precipitation that we're going to get uh, this weekend, thanks be to God. And, um, and so there'll be palms for those who like to do the doily things or whatever, I don't know what you call them, but I'm not artistic, so good for you, for you and those who are, right? That's pretty cool. Uh, but there'll be some at the, um, in the entrances again, they will be blessed. And so if you um, like to do those sorts of things, we pr I promise you there will be more palms uh, for you to do that with. So I appreciate your, your patience with that. I invite you at this time to please rise and, and to turn your attention to the back of the church as you are able. Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the Paschal celebration of the celebration of the Lord's Paschal mystery, that is to say of His passion and resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that He entered His own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in His footsteps, so that being made by His grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in His resurrection and in His life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, sanctify these branches with Your blessing that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through Him, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Please join us in uh, singing this uh, processional hymn. The processional will, will be a little creative today as we're trying to integrate uh, how to do the um, Palm Sunday in, in spaces where we may not have large enough gathering spaces. And so uh, I will be, we'll be going around the right, coming back around the left, and then back down the middle as kind of a, a way to um, really commemorate that, that coming of Christ into Jerusalem. Yeah, please go. Please join us in singing the opening hymn. Number 143. All glory, love. The company of angels 
praise and prayers and anthems before you we present all glory lord and honor to you redeemer king to you my lips of children make sweet hosannas ring let us pray Almighty ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed His lesson of patient suffering and so merit to share in His resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I may know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, I open my ear that I may hear. I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I will never be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Tonight we will sing the response, so it is on page 95 of your hymnal.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not record, regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness. And found in human appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name, which is above every name, it is the name of Jesus, that at the name of Jesus every name knee shall bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess, Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of, the, of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every other name. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. <clears throat> the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread were to take place in two days' time, so the chief priest and the scribes were seeking a way to arrest him by treachery and put him to death. They said, Not during the festival, for fear that they may ride among the people. When he was in Bethany, reclining at table, in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of perfumed oil, costly, genuine spikenard. She broke the alabaster jar and poured it on his head. There were some who were indignant. Why has there been this waste of perfumed oil? It could have been sold for more than 300 days' wages and the money given to the poor. They were infuriated with her. Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you make trouble for her? She has done a good thing for me. The poor you will always have with you, and whenever you wish you can do good to them, but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anticipated anointing my body for burial. Amen, I say to you, wherever the gospel is proclaimed to the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went off to the chief priest to hand him over to them. When they heard him, they were pleased and promised to pay him money. Then he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the, feast day of the, on the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man will meet you carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room furnished, with, furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples then went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he came with the twelve, and as they reclined at table and were eating, Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed, and to say to him one by one, 
He said to them, One of the twelve, the one who dips with me into the dish. For the Son of Man indeed goes as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, and said, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine, until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, All of you will have your faith shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Then Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he vehemently said, replied, Even though I should have died for you, I will not deny you. And they all spoke similarly. Then they came to a place named Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter, James, and John, and began to be troubled and distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch. He advanced a little and fell to the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass by him. He said, Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup away from me, but not what I will, but what you will. When he returned, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing again, he prayed, saying the same thing. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open and did not know what to answer him. He returned a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. See, my betrayer is at hand. Then, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a crowd with swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. His betrayer had arranged a signal with them, saying, He came and immediately went over to him and said, And he kissed him. At this, laid hands on him and arrested him. One of the betrayer, one of the bystanders, drew his sword, struck the high priest's servant, and cut off his ear. Jesus said to them in reply, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I was with you teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me but that the scriptures may be fulfilled. And they all left him and fled. Now a young man followed him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth about his body. They seized him. But he left the cloth behind and ran off naked. They led Jesus away to the high priest, and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. Peter followed him at a distance into the high priest's courtyard and was seated with the guards, warming himself at the fire. The chief priest and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none. Many gave false witness against him, but their testimony did not agree. Some took the stand and testified falsely against him, alleging... Even so, with 
Even so, their testimony did not agree. The high priest rose before the assembly and questioned Jesus, saying, But he was silent and answered nothing again. The high priest asked him and said to him, Then Jesus answered, I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. At that, the high priest tore his garments and said, They all condemned him as deserving to die. Some began to spit on him. They blindfolded him and struck him and said to him, And the guards greeted him with blows. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the high priest's maids came along. Seeing Peter warming himself, she looked intently at him and said, But he denied it, saying, So he went out into the outer court. Then the cock crowed. The maid saw him and began again to say to the bystanders, This man is the one of them. Once again he denied it. A little later the bystanders said to Peter once more, He began to curse and to swear. And immediately the cock crowed a second time. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had said to him. Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. He broke down and wept. As soon as morning came, the chief priest and the elders and the scribes, that is, the whole Sanhedrin, held a council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him. He said to him in reply, You say so. The chief priest accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him. Jesus gave him no further answer so that Pilate was amazed. Now, on the occasion of the feast, he used to release to them one prisoner whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was then in prison, along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask him to do for them as he was accustomed Pilate answered, For he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priest had handed him over. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, They shouted again. Pilate said to them, they only shouted loud, the louder. Crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them and, after he had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the praetorium, and assembled the whole cohort. They clothed him in purple and, weaving a crown of thorns, placed it on him. They began to salute him with, Hail, King of the Jews, and kept striking his head with a reed and spitting upon him. They knelt before him in homage, and when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to crucify him. They pressed into service a passerby, Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. They brought him to the place of Golgotha, which is translated place of the skull. They gave him wine drugged with myrrh, but he did not take it. 
Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. With him, they crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right and one on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes mocked him among themselves and said, Those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lima sabachthani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, One of them ran, soaked the sponge with wine, put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. The veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion who stood facing him saw how he breathed his last, he said, There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of, younger, of the younger James and of Joseph, and Salome, these women had followed him when he was in Galilee and ministered to him. There were also many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When it was already evening, since it was the day of preparation, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a distinguished member of the consul who was himself awaiting the kingdom of God, came and courageously went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was amazed that he was already dead. He summoned the centurion and asked him if Jesus had already died. And when he learned of it that from the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. Having bought a linen cloth, he took him down, wrapped him in the linen cloth, and laid him in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance to the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, watched where they watched where he was laid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It sounds like perhaps Jesus was feeling some uh, falling into despair or perhaps or a lack of hope. That perhaps Jesus had lost faith or confidence in his mission. Uh, 
I'd like you to, for those of you who'd like, to open your missalette to page 95. Jesus is, has not fallen into despair. He has not lost confidence in his mission. He's showing that he's in absolute control. If we look at the responsorial psalm, Psalm 22. The psalm was written a thousand years before Christ by King David. Now, in, in Scripture, Old Testament, um, the New Testament is foreshadowed in the Old Testament, and the Old Testament is fulfilled in the New Testament. And this is precisely what the Lord is doing. If we look at Psalm, 95, excuse me, Psalm 22 on page 95, we see some of the very same words written a thousand years before Christ that Christ had just said in the gospel today. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? They mock me with parted lips. He relied on the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him if he loves him. Money dogs surround me. A pack of evildoers closes in upon me. They have pierced my hands and feet. I can count all my bones. They divide my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. Some of these are the very same words that the Lord had used, and some of these are the things that happened to the Lord in his passion and his death. All of these things written a thousand years before Christ, and here they are being played out. Jesus is not despairing on the cross. He's living out Psalm 22. In Palm Sunday, when Jesus comes into the city of Jerusalem, he's coming in on, the, on a donkey that's never been ridden before, which is the right of a king. He's coming in and people are laying their garments down in front of him, and they've, they have palms and they're waving palms, and hence the palms that we have yeah, in our hands today. And all of this is to signify the coming of the Messiah into, the, into uh, Jerusalem for his victory. Now the people have been waiting, the Jewish people have been waiting for a Messiah for a long time. But in their minds they had it a bit wrong. They were right to know that the Messiah was coming. And they knew this at the birth of Christ even, which is why Herod wanted him killed. But what they didn't realize is that he wasn't going to be a political leader or a military leader. And that's what they were hoping for. And so they were welcoming him into Jerusalem. And less than a week later, he's hanging on the cross. And he did, by his passion and death, precisely what he meant to do, to claim victory, not over nations, but over sin and death. Not for earthly things, but for eternal This is a reminder for us that Jesus knows exactly what he is doing, that he has things in control. And I sometimes need to hear this myself because it seems that um, as the world continues to grow more and more upside down, and now is not the time to talk about the different ways, but we see enough of it, to think that, you know, God, where are you in this? Or we think that there will be a, uh, perhaps there is a, a, a political leader or something who can save us from this madness. But our, our faith, our trust, when the things seem to be at their worst, when life seems to be in its darkest hour, when all things, when the world just seems to be against us, to, to place our trust in the Lord, the one who had foretold of him a thousand years prior to his doing what he actually was going to do. The one who has come to do what he said he was going to do, the one who came to save us, the one who came to die for us, to destroy death, the one who came to rise for us, to restore life. It is inevitable that we experience pain and suffering in this life. That's not why he came. He came to save us. He came for that eternal good. He comes as king for our salvation. And so there's no need for us to lose hope. There's no need for us to fall into despair. There is no need for us to lose confidence in our faith or in the mission of Christ and our mission as followers of Christ. He just asks us to be faithful. He asks us to trust in him, to follow him, 
and he will return as king. Amen. Together with one heart and one voice, let us proclaim our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead in the life of the world to come. Amen. As the solemnity of Easter approaches, let all our prayers to the Lord be more insistent that all of us and the whole multitude of the baptized may come to share more abundantly in this sacred mystery. That Pope Francis and all bishops and priests, obedient to the call of Jesus, receive grace to carry his cross humbly in the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That national and local leaders stand up for the rights of prisoners, especially those who are unjustly accused. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the elders of this faith community especially those who are sick or going through hard times, may find peace through prayer. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those among us facing a crisis of faith may find renewed hope in the scriptures, rites, and prayers of Holy Week. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the members of our Disciples of the Mission Area Catholic Community celebrate Holy Week with renewed faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. That all those who have died, especially Paul Byrne, may rise again to see God's face in glory. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For all the requests and supplications that we now keep in our hearts, Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Have mercy, O Lord, on the prayers of your church and turn with compassion to the hearts that bow before you, that those who make shares in the divine mystery may never be left without your assistance. Through Christ our Lord.
Our song for the preparation of the gifts is Spirit and Grace, number 362. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and all His holy church. 
through the passion of your only begotten Son, our Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice make, made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church in recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. 
be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Patrick our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech You, O Lord, that just as through the death of Your Son You have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by His resurrection You may lead us to where You call, through Christ our Lord. On Easter Sunday morning, just in the morning Masses, there will be three Sunday morning Masses for Easter. See the bulletin for the details. But there will be a, uh, an Easter blessing. Uh, there will be a table for... Uh, sometimes people bring like food or like cakes or um, Easter baskets, whatever. And there will be a table. We're not quite sure where it will be yet. Um, Donna will help me with that. Um, but I'll either bless it right before the Easter morning Mass or at the end of the Easter Mass. I'm guessing at the end perhaps. Um, but, and so that's something if... If um, you're accustomed to whatever we, we can do, we're going to do that, and you're, you're free to, to bring something in and, and place on the table uh, for the blessing. Uh, tomorrow morning, I, I'm sure it's still going, but uh, it should be. Uh, the Casey um, breakfast, the, the, it's a pro-life breakfast. It'll be held at the hall. Uh, see the bulletin for details. Uh, also on Monday at 6.45 p.m. here, uh, there will be a, uh, uh, well, it's a mass for rain, um, and uh, I'll take the snow to be on. I mean, I'm fine by that. But uh, really, it's, it'll be also um, a mass for, um, uh, for rain, but also in Thanksgiving for the moisture that we've already received and that we'll uh, hopefully receive um, tomorrow and, and Monday. Uh, we, we need it, and so um, we'll, we'll pray for that as well. The Lord be with you. With Bow down for the blessing. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Our closing song is number 137, Gracious God.
Jacob.